Hey everybody, Thomas Joseph here. Now, coconut cream pie is the perfect pie for coconut lovers. And although it might be intimidating to make, with the right tips and the technique, you should be able to make this restaurant-worthy pie at home. Now, let me show you how. So to start off, we need some pie dough. And this is the basic pat brise recipe that we use here all the time in the Martha Stewart Living Test Kitchens. We have a lot of recipes and videos up online, so if you need a little bit of help with how to make it, check out those videos and recipes. Now, I'm gonna lightly flour my surface here and take the pie dough and place it right on the floured surface, a little bit of flour on top, and you want to make sure that your pie dough isn't icy cold. It's not really, really hard. So let it sit out of the refrigerator for about five, maybe even 10 minutes so that it's easy to roll out. Now I'm using a simple French rolling pin. It's a tapered rolling pin. And this is what I like to use when I'm rolling out pie dough. Now I'm using a half batch of pat brise today because I'm making a single crust pie. Single crust pies are pies that typically have either a cooked filling or maybe even a crumble like topping on them. And what we're gonna do today is after we roll this out and crimp it and put it into the pie plate, I'm gonna blind bake this crust because we're not going to further cook it after we add the filling. So I'm rolling out the dough as you can see. Every time I roll the dough, I turn the dough about 90 degrees this is just to ensure that it doesn't stick onto the counter itself. And it will also help you get a nice rounded shape. I'm gonna keep rolling this dough out. I'm applying pressure in one direction and then I kind of release the pressure on the rolling pin to roll back. This will help you get a nice even rolled out dough. So the recipe that I'm using today is going to be in a nine inch pie plate. So I need to roll this dough out into a 13 inch round. That will give me enough to fit it into the corners of the pie plate and give me a little bit of extra pie dough so that I can fold the edge and give a beautiful crimp to the crust. And now to pick up the dough so you can fit it into the pie plate, I like to use the rolling pin here to help. So just roll up the dough on the rolling pin. Don't apply any pressure. You don't wanna compress the dough too, too much. And if there's any excess flour on the bottom of your pastry, you can just brush it away with a pastry brush here. And then gently unfurl the dough right over the pie plate. So pick up the dough by the side, use your other hand to kind of gently press into the corners of the pie plate. Now I'm gonna trim the edge of the pie crust here. So I don't need all of this dough. So I'll trim off about a half of an inch. You can do that with a pair of kitchen shears like this. And now take the edge and just fold it under like this. So again, just taking the excess dough, folding it under to create a nice edge. And this will give us a substantial edge to create a beautiful crimped crust. So there are many different ways to crimp or to embellish the edge of a pie. You can use a fork, that's kind of standard and maybe what your grandmother used to do. What I'm gonna do today is just use my fingers and pinch the dough into a nice fluted edge. So I take my thumb and my thumb and my pointer finger and just press the dough together. You wanna to make sure that this thumb here is kind of exerting a bit of force so that it's really sticking the pie dough down to the lip of the plate. This will help in the baking process so the pie edge won't fall into the baking dish. Since this pie dough has been out of the refrigerator for quite some time and we really want it to bake up and be nice and flaky, I'm gonna pop this into the refrigerator or freezer until it's nice and firm and icy cold before putting it into our oven. So this is going right into the refrigerator. So the crust has been in the refrigerator for about 15 minutes. It's nice and cold and firm to the touch. Now, blind baking. This is the process where we completely bake the crust before we add a filling to it. So I have my oven preheated to 375 degrees. I'm gonna take a piece of parchment paper here, crinkle it up. It just helps to make the paper a little bit softer, more malleable so that it fits into the corners of the pie crust nicely. Because what we're gonna do, part of the blind baking process is to bake the pie crust with some weights so that it doesn't bubble up and the pie crust doesn't become misshapen. So this parchment goes right into your crust here. 
and take some pie weights. I'm using baking beans, but you could use whatever you have on hand. Rice works really well, lentils, beans. You can even buy in some specialty stores little kind of marbles that are meant for line baking. So you're gonna bake this with the weights in it for 25 to 30 minutes, remove the parchment paper with the beans and continue to bake until the pie crust is completely set and golden brown and that will take about 10 to 15 minutes more. So into the oven. Okay, so the pie crust is in the oven baking up and now it's time to make the filling. Now I love a custard kind of pudding like filling and that's exactly what we're making here today. So the way that I like to make puddings is doing it in a kind of a one pot method. You don't need to temper yolks, you don't need all these different bowls, everything just goes into one pot. So some granulated sugar, this is a half a cup of granulated sugar and a quarter of a cup of cornstarch. Now cornstarch is really important when you're making a pudding filling like this because this ultimately is the thickener that's gonna give you a filling that will slice nicely in the end. And I like to add it to the sugar here with a whisk so that I break up the cornstarch because cornstarch tends to clump on you so adding it to the sugar and whisking it together breaks up those clumps. I'm also going to add a half a teaspoon of coarse kosher salt. So now I'm gonna add the wet ingredients. This is one and a half cups of coconut milk. You wanna make sure that you're not using light coconut milk because we really want all of that wonderful richness from the full fat coconut milk and we also want the flavor. So I'm just gently whisking this into the dry ingredients here. I don't have the heat on just yet. And in addition to the coconut milk, I'm also going to use a little bit of whole milk. So this is one and a quarter cups of regular whole milk. And one of the things that I think people kind of run into when they're making a coconut cream pie at home is that they don't get a rich coconut flavor from the filling that they're making. So what I like to do in addition to using coconut milk is to add a little extra flavor. Now, this is some coconut rum and I like to add a couple tablespoons to this mixture. And what it does is it just gives a really great coconutty flavor. So add that in here. And now four egg yolks. The egg yolks are gonna add wonderful richness and color, and they also will help in thickening the mixture slightly. Now, when you're making a pudding like this, you know, it's really important to read your recipe and make sure that you stick to those measurements. So a quarter of a cup of cornstarch and three and three quarters cups of liquid are really gonna give you the right texture for your filling. You're not gonna end up with something that's too loose or in contrast to that, anything that's too bouncy and stiff and really not delicious. So I'm gonna turn the heat up now to about medium heat and I'm gonna whisk this until it comes up to a boil and then this mixture to really kind of activate the thickening potential of the cornstarch needs to boil for about a minute to two minutes. So I'm gonna whisk away and I'm also gonna check on that pie crust. All right, so it's been about five minutes and you can see how thick the filling has got here. And I'm gonna just continue to cook this just for a minute or so more. It's up to a nice kind of rigorous boil. And this is just to ensure that the filling is nice and thick and will be sliceable in the end. Now I'm calling this, you know, a coconut cream pie filling, or I've been saying it's a pudding, but this is essentially a pastry cream as well. You know, something that you could use to fill eclairs or cream puffs with. It's kind of a basic recipe that can be used in so many different ways. So this is good. I'm just going to now strain this mixture through a coarse sieve. And this is just to kind of pull out any little bits of egg white that might have been mixed in with your egg yolks, or if you had any clumps from the cornstarch, you'd be able to fish those out right now. So this looks great here. And now for even more coconut flavor, I'm going to add a cup of sweetened shredded coconut. I like to toast it because I feel like it really enhances the flavor and gives a nuttiness and even more coconut flavor. So you'll have a filling that's really, really delicious and robust. Now, 
This is kind of unique. It adds a little bit of texture to your filling. So if you weren't necessarily a fan of having, you know, a bit of chewiness added into the filling, you certainly could add this into your mixture while you're cooking it and then strain it out at the end too. So you get that same great flavor, but you have a kind of a silky filling in the end. I'm also gonna add a little bit of vanilla extract as well. Now vanilla extract really does help to kind of intensify other flavors. Even here with the coconut, it adds really great flavor and helps to intensify the coconutiness of this filling. So stir this together. And now the filling, while it's still warm, is gonna go right into your pre-baked pie shell. This smells so good, guys. I wish you could smell this. You know, another fun thing you could do if you're really interested in doing this, uh, you could add a little bit of maybe chopped chocolate with the coconut at this very end stage and have it melt in and you'd have a chocolate coconut cream pie, which could be really delicious. So now a piece of plastic wrap right over the top of the filling and just gently press it down onto the filling and this will help prevent a skin or film from forming on the top of your filling. And this is gonna go right into the refrigerator to chill for a few hours until it's nice and firm, and then we'll be ready to top it with some whipped cream and serve it. All right, so the pie has been chilling for about four hours in the refrigerator. I'm gonna remove the plastic wrap. You can see that it's set up nicely here. Now, to top this off, I have a little bit of whipped cream with some confectioner sugar. And I just, like to mound this on top of the pie right before serving. You can work the whipped cream out to the edges. You can add as little or as much as you would like. And to top this pie off, and so people know what it is, a little bit of coconut flakes. Now these are unsweetened coconut flakes. You can find them at most grocery stores these days. And if you toast them lightly, they really have great flavor. And just sprinkle that over the top. If you didn't want to go out to the grocery store and buy these coconut flakes, you could certainly just use some sweet and shredded coconut on top too. And now to serve this, I like to use one of these offset serrated knives here. Just give yourself a really generous piece. Now make sure that you really cut through the crust. It should be well baked and crisp. And using one of these handy dandy pie servers, you can serve yourself up a piece of this amazing coconut cream pie. Now, as always, if you have any kitchen conundrums, any baking conundrums, any holiday conundrums, reach out to us using the hashtag kitchen conundrums. We love to hear from you. And we like to see if you guys are making these recipes, so send us pictures as well. Enjoy. The perfect amount of coconut on top. And as always, guys, click like and subscribe.